All right, I know we've done a lot of theory. Let's actually dive into a few homework examples and see how this is all going to work out. Uh, let's start with number two. Uh, so they say, uh, let W be our set of objects, and that be the union of the first and third quadrants in the xy plane. So first and third quadrants, just in case it's been a little while since you did your quadrants, uh, first and third quadrants, there's the first, and down here is the third. Uh, so basically, either x and y are both positive, or x and y are both negative. So this is their fancy way of saying that. x, y with the product of x, y being greater than or equal to zero. Uh, the equal to zero, I guess, means that the axes are included. So one coordinate can be zero, or both. Okay, so this is certainly elements out of a known vector space, by the way. These are R2 elements. Uh, so if U is in W, so if it's from the first or third quadrant, and C is any scalar, is CU in W? <laughs> Why? Okay. So they're asking about all of them, but let's just try an example first of all. So let's take something from the first quadrant and let's multiply it by a scalar. Uh, let's multiply it by 5. Is that still something in the first or third quadrant? Oops. I mean, the answer is yes, it is. Uh, let's take something else. from W, uh, let's maybe do a negative 5, negative 3, so that's something out of the third quadrant, and let's multiply it by a scalar, and that comes out 10, 6. So I started with something in the third quadrant, ended up with something in the first quadrant. It's still in the first and third quadrants. I'm starting to get the feeling that the answer to this question is yes. No matter what constant I pick, Multiplying a positive by two positives gives me two positives. <laughs> uh, multiplying a negative by two positives will give me two negatives, which is in the third quadrant. And likewise here, a negative constant times two negatives gives me two positives, or a negative constant times two positives will give me two negatives. All those cases uh, still in either the first or third quadrant. So. I'll say yes, it's closed under scalar multiplication. Um, it has the zero vector, by the way, uh, because we're allowed to have the product be equal to zero. Uh, but so for being a subspace, I've met closure under scalar multiplication. I've met the fact that it has a zero vector. But B says find specific vectors now they're asking us to get a counter example. Find specific vectors u and v in w such, such that u plus v is not in w. So they're saying show it's not closed under addition. So in other words, they want some sort of vector from the space. So there's one in the first quadrant and they want to be able to add it to some other vector in the space. There's another one from the first quadrant. And get something that's not in the space. Now this is a bad example because this one still works. Right? That's a uh, still a vector in the first quadrant. So I'm still within W. But let's get a counter example. Let's get 5, 3, plus negative 4, negative 4. This is a vector from W. That's a vector from W, third quadrant. When I add them together, though, I get 1, negative 1. Oh, and that's in the fourth quadrant. Uh, that is not closed under addition because I added two vectors from W together and got a vector that was outside. Of W. Okay, so W is not a vector space. 
failed closure under addition. That's right. Okay, let's look at number six. Uh, so for five through eight, they're saying, um, find out if we've got a subspace of, of polynomial space. Again, we know polynomials um, of degree two or whatever are, are a vector space. Um, so now here they're saying all polynomials of this particular form, a plus d squared, where a is a real number. So examples of this would be things like 5 plus t squared, or negative 17 plus t squared, or pi plus t squared. Those are all vectors from this particular subset of P2. Um, so the question is, is that a not just a subset, but a subspace? In other words, does it work as a vector space? If you add two of these guys together, do you get another one of these guys? Uh, if you multiply one of these guys by five, do you get another one of these guys? Is there a zero vector here? And I think you can maybe see that the answer to all three of those questions was no. It actually fails all three. Uh, if you add two of these together, what do you get? Uh, like if you add these two together, 5 plus t squared plus negative 17 plus t squared. Do you get something of this form? Uh, let's find out. So collect like terms. 5, negative 17, be negative 12. t squared plus t squared is 2t squared. And that's not this form, right? This form did not allow for another constant there in front of t squared. It was just plain t squared. And when you add two of those together, you don't get another one of them. So already broken. Uh, same thing's definitely true for scalar multiplication. If you multiplied one of these by 5, again, you're going to get something that doesn't just have t squared. It's going to be 25 plus 5t squared. Uh, so that's broken under... Uh, scalar multiplication as well, and there's no zero vector here. Right? The zero vector would have to be zero plus um, zero t squared is what it would take to have a zero vector in that set. And again, that doesn't match their definition here. Um, so six is a subgroup, a subset uh, of a known vector space, but it is not a subspace. It does not work as a vector space because it fails at three of the conditions. All right, so let's move on to look at number 12. Um, 12 says, let's get all vectors of this particular form. So it's certainly a subset of R4. Uh, oops, get on the right layer. So it is a subset of R4. In other words, if I pick an S and a T, I'll get something from R4. But is it a subspace? Keep in mind, to be a subspace, it has to meet, technically it has to meet 10 conditions. But we know seven of them will come from just being R4. So it doesn't meet the other three. Uh, so is it a subspace? of R4. Um, okay, and they say use the method of exercise 11, which you can't see right now, but what it all hinges on is theorem 1 down here. Remember theorem 1? It said if you've got some vectors, v1, v2, vp, whatever, um, that are from a vector space, then the span is indeed a subspace. How does that help? If I can show that number 12 
if that's a span of some vectors from R4, then automatically subspace. So let me rewrite what I've got here. Kind of break it apart into the S's and the T's. So that's still equivalent, that's still the same set of vectors. And of course I'm going to factor an S and a T, so this would be S times 2, 2, 2, 0, plus T times 4, 0, negative 3, 5. Or to back that up one more step, that is exactly the definition of the span of two R4 vectors. And theorem one again, oh, this is going to be a little messy, sorry. Theorem one says if you've got two vectors from R4, like 2, 2, 2, 0, and 4, 0, negative 3, 5, then their span is a subspace. Uh, so that's exactly what we've got. So all I really did here was I showed the form of the objects they were talking about. Could be rewritten as a span of objects from a known vector space. And as soon as we know it's span of objects from a known vector space, it's also a vector space. I know this feels like we are playing with words and definitions, and in a way we are. However, as we move forward, if we know some collection of objects is a vector space, we'll be able to do lots of things with it that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So this idea of having a vector space and knowing that that collection of objects plays by the rules will save us a lot of grief further down the line. Uh, so 4.1 is really here to just get you comfortable with the definition of a vector space. They're going to write homework problems for you that just make you think about those 10 conditions and particularly those three conditions uh, that tend to be the crucial ones. Uh, so give the homework a shot. Uh, if you have questions, reach out to me. I'm happy to help clarify. This is kind of the foundational section for chapter four. So I want to make sure you're on a solid foundation before you move forward.